Hey everyone, welcome to Prosperous Life Finance where I show you guys how to become a better trader and investor. In this video, we're going to be looking at stock market order types. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So in this video, I'm going to be using the Robinhood brokerage firm, but this is the exact same for any brokerage firm which you're using in order to buy and sell stocks. So in this example, we're going to be using Apple. Once we're going to buy a share, we see that there are these order types here. So the first one we're going to be looking at is going to be the market order. So the market order is a request that's made to your brokerage firm in order to fill your order immediately and at the next available price. So this is one of the most basic types of orders and it is great if you want to enter and exit a trade rapidly, which means that timing is your main concern and tends to execute the order quickly, especially during very high volume and liquid markets. So the only downside is that the execution price might be above the initial order price due to rapid fluctuations of the stock, which is the only drawback. So let's say we're going to buy one share. So as we can see one share of Apple at the market price is $317.13. If we were to click buy, this wouldn't necessarily give it to us at this price due to the fact that it is a market order. A market order will execute at the next best price, which either could be 317 and 13 cents, or it could be 318, 319, 320. It just depends on the volume and how much that this stock is currently fluctuating. So while this might not seem like a big deal, an extra dollar or two can add to the overall cost as many investors buy large amounts of shares at a time, which can potentially eat up into their profits and narrow down their buying power. So this is one of the most basic types of orders, and this is the market order so now going on to the second one we're going to look at a limit order so a limit order is a request that's made to your brokerage firm in order to fill your order at an exact price which is actually personally my favorite type of order so as we can see here this means that the order will not be filled until it reaches that price or a better one this is also one of the most basic types of orders and it's great if you want to enter and exit a trade at a specific price and if you are also willing to wait until the order gets filled so once again since you are choosing the exact price at which you want to enter or exit the trade the stock price may never actually reach that point which means that the order execution is not guaranteed so let's say for example we want to go ahead and buy apple and the current market price is 317 dollars and 13 cents let's say you want to go ahead and buy the stock when it reaches 315 dollars flat so as we can see you can choose the time frame which means either good for day or good till canceled good for day means that your if your order does not execute within the market day it'll expire at the market close and good till canceled means that if your order doesn't execute it'll expire in 90 days so let's say you want to go ahead and buy at this limit price whenever we purchase this stock it will not execute until this security which is apple reaches this limit price so once again this is my favorite type of order the only drawback is that it is not guaranteed so it should be used accordingly so the great thing about this is that it allows you to get the stock at the exact price which you would like to enter or exit the trade so going on to the third we see that it's this is a stop loss order so a stop loss order is a request made to your brokerage from in order to fill your order once the stock reaches a certain price and it is intended to limit an investor's loss on a trade so let's say you are going to use a buy stop order that means that you're going to buy the stock once it reaches the stop order price and then you can use the sell stop in order to sell the stock once it reaches the stop order price so once your stock reaches the stop it automatically turns into a market order which incorporates all of the characteristics of a market order so as we see here the current stock price is once again 317 dollars and 13 cents let's say you want to go ahead and add a buy stop price so let's say you set the stop price at 318 dollars flat so once apple does reach this stop price of $318, this will automatically turn it into a market order and then execute that trade at the next available price. We do know that even though we do show $318 flat, it could enter either at that price or the next available price. So that is one thing to keep in mind. And the same is equal for the sell stop, even though it is a reverse. So now going into a stop limit order. So you can use the buy stop limit order in order to buy the stock once it reaches the stop order price and the limit price. So this is essentially a stop loss order with a limit. The thing to keep in mind is that once your stock reaches your stop, it automatically turns it into a limit order, which does not guarantee that the order will be filled as we saw earlier with the characteristics of a limit order. So once again, let's say we're going to buy one share of Apple and we are going to put our stop price at $318 flat and we're going to put our limit price as $318. $18.50. So once Apple reaches the stop price, which is $318, the stop is going to be triggered and it is going to turn into a limit order. So it is going to buy this stock once the price reaches $318.50. So that is how a stop limit order works, which is essentially the same as a stop loss order, except that it has an extra limit attached to it. So lastly, we're going to look at a trailing stop order. And essentially it is similar to the stop order and is designed to lock in profits or limit losses as a stock price moves. So the stop level can be chosen as a dollar amount or a percentage of the stock's total price such as five percent or ten percent for example so 
in order to keep levels even we're going to go ahead and use a trail type of percentage and let's just say we're going to use a five percent amount so let's just ignore this price right here and say that apple currently costs 100 dollars in order to keep things even so that means that the trailing stop would be triggered if the stock fell to 95 which is once again five percent of the total price which in this theoretical example is 100 dollars. so once again if the stock fell to 95 dollars the trailing stop would be triggered so now let's go ahead and choose another example and let's say that the same stock goes up to 200 dollars once again with a five percent trail percentage the broker term is going to automatically adjust the trigger price to five percent of the new share price which is in this case two hundred dollars so that means that the trailing stop would be set at one hundred and ninety dollars which is five percent of the total which is two hundred dollars and it would automatically be triggered if it reaches that stop so for beginners i currently recommend the market and limit order as you slowly gain experience and see how these other order types can affect your order and purchase so if you guys would like to learn more about investing and trading go ahead and check out the other videos on my youtube channel in order to gain more information and also learn new things about trading and investing so thank you guys for watching if you guys gained some valuable information go ahead and give this video a like and also subscribe for more videos just like these thank you guys for watching god bless you all and i'll see you guys in the next video